looked at a thousand dollar projector. I've looked at a 500 ish range dollar projector, both by LG subsequently, both ultra short throws. But let's say you want to do it for less than a hundred dollars and you want something pretty decent. Now, if you're expecting quality of those two projectors out of this, you might be a little disappointed. It's a 480p screen on the inside, a TFT LCD LED screen, and uh, that's a mouthful, but I'll put some information to it down below as well, and we're gonna talk about it in this video. But if you're interested in building a little man cave home theater set up 1200 lumen, almost Pico projector, you know, it said Pico projector, it just doesn't feel very pico -y to me. I mean, it's small, but it's not Pico projector to me. Two USBs, both for data transfer in or for powering a USB device, an HDMI input. You've got your AV plugin, you've got your audio head jack or external speaker plugin, and an SD card reader as well. Pretty featureful for not that much money. You also have a screw in order to uh, thread it in right here and hang it from something. You have one adjustable foot, which was kind of disappointing. I wish there was more around it because there's kind of a slow lean to it. Anyways, it might not be everything that the other ones are, but for under $100 and just something that'll work, something that'll give you that experience to grow into if you want to spend more money on a better one in the future, let's take a look at it. And hopefully I cover everything you guys want to hear and hopefully it's informative. Welcome to the Kitchen of Doom. So the acoustics should be absolutely terrible in here, especially coupled with the raw audio of the Lumix G7. This is pretty cool. So for under $100, we can hopefully obtain something that's really neat, and that is this projector. This uh, label is a Pico projector. I mean, it's pretty small, but I wouldn't say it's terribly small. It doesn't really feel Pico-y to me. I think usually those little tiny ones that you can pretty much put in your pocket. Let me be very careful here. There we go. So this little projector will hopefully be your under $100. Now I've looked at projectors that cost, you know, $500, $600. I've looked at projectors that cost over $1,000. Can we affordably make a little nice home entertainment projection uh, theater room with this? Now this isn't an ultra short throw like what I usually look at because those are just nice. Convenient to put them up close to the wall and then have the size image that you want on the wall or space or screen, whatever you're putting it in front of and uh, not have to worry about hanging it, placing it back, putting it on a counter, putting it on a table behind you, people walking in front of it. This is just a Pico LED projector, and we're going to see just how good it is, because for less than 100 bucks, I don't know, it could be a big win. We'll find out, let's take a look at it. Oh yeah, before I forget, comes with an HDMI cable, comes with a power adapter cable, comes with your audio, you know, composite cables. These are composite cables, right baby? This comes with audio component cables, a pretty quick launch little small user guide with lots of pictures because I like pictures. That's pretty much it. And uh, oh, oh, the remote too. This was really cool. This looks like a, uh, if you've ever had a Fire TV before, the remote is very reminiscent of a Fire TV. It's very sleek, really nice design that's seemingly very straightforward and easy to use hopefully. So that's pretty cool. Anyways, let's move into taking a look at it and seeing what we think. Super washed out. That's what you see right now. It's a super washed out image. This is a wall. We're going to try to project a six foot. Uh, screen on the wall and we'll see what we think about that. We'll also take a closer look at it as that time comes because there's things to look at with this but also keeping in mind it's under a hundred bucks so you know there you go. Anyways we'll talk more specifications in a minute. Let's go ahead and get a test out of the way of what it looks like and we'll show you under different lights. You probably can't tell very well right now. It is on. It says I think 1500 lumens but I'm, I'm you know somewhat doubtful of that. We do have four bright spotlights on, as you can see, it's a very overexposed shot right now. So we'll go ahead and turn that off so we can take a look at it. So we can see we have a pretty decent image. It doesn't look terribly bad at all. Actually, nice, good six-foot screen on the wall, nothing too terrible. Now, one thing I will say is your colors are a little bit hard to adjust. You really get three settings, then you can do some manual tuning in there as well. But when it comes to looking at it, you get pretty good quality out of this as is. The things that we'll talk about though, of course, because it's a small 480 screen inside there projecting out, you can definitely see some pixelation on the actual uh, the wall itself. The closer you get or the bigger you make the image because essentially you're just going to be zooming into the pixelation that you have. So that's something to keep in mind there. This wonderful video playing now is just because I don't want to do any copyright infringement on somebody else's work. So we're watching one of my own videos. But if you get close enough to it, you'll see some pixelation in there. If you can get real close and examine, you'll see each of the individual dots that are being broadcasted out. We're looking at a pretty good image though. So that's something that I do like about it, especially for under a hundred bucks. We don't typically have a lot of issues. Now in the top right hand corner, it's harder to see on this than it is um, in the actual shot that you're seeing now, so it's kind of take my word for it thing. Got a little bit of corner blur, but with a little bit of plane, we can kind of fix that. Some neat functions that you can do too is uh, it's got that 
Ooh, don't mean to shake it so much. You got a focus wheel on it. That's pretty standard. You get a focus wheel with pretty much just every projector. So we'll severely out of focus it, refocus it. Now, instead of having some sort of auto keystone, it has the manual keystone, which doesn't give you a huge range and it can kind of help you with some of those corners. But uh, if you're trying to project it down at an angle or straight up at an angle, you can do that as well, as well as broadcast it backwards or upside down, inverted, flipped, and back around. So if you want to put it behind a screen and project it onto the screen, that's something you can do as well. Pretty cool. Anyways, we'll go over some specifications, some stuff about the menu here in just a moment. Inside we have the TFT LCD LED projector screen. It's a 480 resolution that's 480p or 800 by 480 RGB with a color reproduction of 16.7 million. It does have a manual keystone, not automatic. So the manual keystone will give you the adjustment ratio of 15 degrees either direction. If you want to set it on a table in front of you in order to cast it onto a wall, that works pretty well so that you can just adjust it within that 15 degrees. Anything else, you might want to throw a book under it or adjust the one foot adjustment that they give you. The lifespan of the bulb claims 30,000 hours. I would speculate that that's probably not true and just some marketing gimmicky stuff right there because I'd imagine that for the price of a new 30,000 hour bulb, you just buy a new projector like this one if you liked it enough, that is. The speakers on it are a single 2 watt 8 ohm speaker and it's actually pretty impressive. It had a pretty decent loud sound to it. One downside to it is the IR sensor is in the back of the projector and this can make it somewhat difficult to sort of find where you want to point your remote. If it doesn't mean putting a mirror in two different places so that it can very easily hit, it's sort of hit or miss if it's actually going to detect when you use it. The cast uh, sizes recommended by the projector are 50 to 130 inches. We had a 6 foot screen on the wall that looked pretty good. The aspect ratios are 4.3 and 16 by 9 respectively. You can pick that and set it or you can just set it on auto so you can auto detect what to put it in. The lens is an f125 lens giving you a decent range of focus which means you can set it pretty much and a wide range of where you want to place it in order to focus it. Now if you go too far you'll get too focused, you'll get blur edges. If you go too close it won't be able to focus at all. Kind of finding that sweet spot is what matters. Anyways guys that's it. This is the, uh, and I'm going to try to say it, there's a whole reason I didn't say the name of this throughout the entire time I did the video because I'm not sure how to pronounce this. Erephus. Or maybe it's Enephus. Erephus. What does that say? Tell me what that says. Arafos. It's the Arafos. But anyways, guys, I hope this was helpful and I hope you enjoyed it. So if you liked it, then leave a like. And uh, if you have any questions about it, leave a comment down below. Hopefully I can answer that for you. Have a great day, night, whatever it is. I'll see you guys in the next video that I do. Sure, honey. Just go ahead and walk through the hardwood floor while I'm recording. Maybe she'll stay put for a second.